on guys? Big Mets here. We are back home in Boulder after a crazy 48 hours in North Carolina. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna wrap you guys up about um, the wind tunnel experience because I think that's something that a lot of people see the pros do and don't um, have the opportunity to do themselves. So yeah, really, really fortunate um, to be in a position where Jeannie and I could head to North Carolina to the A2 wind tunnel and test the new Quintana Roo VPR. So um, I'm gonna walk you guys through a little bit about what that experience was like, kind of uh, getting in the team that we had with us, um, how to make the most out of a wind tunnel trip like that. And uh, yeah, I really feel like both Jeannie and I got a ton out of it. So I'm gonna walk you guys through kind of uh, how it all went down. So first thing was we were supposed to get there on Sunday, but uh, North Carolina had a once in a 10 year ice storm. And so we got all of our canceled, all of our flights canceled on Sunday, which was actually kind of um, a bit of a headache for us. So uh, we ended up flying out super early on Monday morning. And with us, we had Kenny, obviously filming this video. And then we had uh, master bike fitter, Ivan O'Gorman, um, pretty famous in the, in the triathlon and cycling space. And then uh, we had Jay Pershoon, who's the content director at Quintana Roo. And then on the ground, who drove from Chattanooga, where Quintana Roo is based, to North Carolina was uh, Brad, who, uh, who was the engineer of the VPR. He kind of designed it and made it. So we had this really awesome staff and this team. Um, we all kind of converged in North Carolina. And uh, yeah, we traveled all morning. We got there at like two o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. And the first thing that I needed to do was kind of get all of my measurements for my current bike. I'm organized in Ivan's system and kind of set the baseline. And right away, we had a meeting with Ivan a couple weeks ago and yeah. we knew that my testing process was gonna be a little bit more intensive than Jeannie's. I think Jeannie just being a super small person, you know, she's like five foot six and really tiny. We already knew she was gonna have a really, really clean CDA. Um, so, and also she's been working, you know, uh, she feels really confident in where her position is. So she didn't feel like she had to make like a ton of adjustments for her. It's just a matter of like, okay, let's confirm some of the stuff that we know and then, um, test some equipment things. For me, I've been feeling some things in my racing where I was like, oh man, I really wish I could access more power. I wish I could have a little bit more sustainability on the back half of a 70.3 and the end of an Ironman. So I was going into the tunnel experience with the main objective being, all right, I would love to find some aerodynamic gains, but even if we net even on the aero, if we can increase the power, I'm gonna be really stoked. So we got in that Monday afternoon, we started building our bike straight away, with Fast and Furious, we built them up, I got my bike in the stand, Ivan started doing all of his Zin measurements and this and that, and uh, we kind of got the baseline measurements and we set out an itinerary for what we thought the runs should look like, and so, we pretty much spent up until about 7 p.m. organizing that, scarfed down some Chipotle that night, and then um, we had our kind of like relative run list of what that was gonna um, entail the next morning. A couple hours sleep, woke up the next morning, I was all amped up, it was Jeannie's first time in the tunnel, so she was all excited. She was set to go first because we knew she was on, on paper gonna be like a little bit easier, so she got going straight away at 8 a.m. And then she got nine runs from eight until about 11 a.m. And after run nine, Two things were happening. She was getting pretty cold because it was really like, um, you know, unseasonably cold in North Carolina that weekend. And uh, yeah, so she was getting a little bit chilly from all that like cold air blowing on her. And then also they were nearing kind of the end of what they were testing, what they wanted to test. They had kind of achieved everything that they wanted. So right when she was done, she had gotten nine runs in. She had saved probably in the range of five to 10 watts on aerodynamics, position remained the same. She left the tunnel feeling really ha happy and confident in the new VPR, which she was pumped about. And then from there, we were like, all right, we got to time is money here in the tunnel. So I popped on the, uh, we popped my old bike on the, on the tunnel um, and we got going and we got rolling. And uh, yeah, we started testing my white bike, which was the PR62. And immediately we set like a really fast baseline test. And then, we started making some adjustments that we were hopeful would have a net neutral kind of arrow penalty, um, but increase my comfort and power. And we started making these adjustments and we saw like the, the aerodynamics going the wrong way. So runs two, three, four, five, six, it was just getting slower and slower and slower from an aerodynamic perspective, even to the point where three of the runs, we tested the exact same setup just to ensure that there was nothing like wrong with you know, me holding position or the tunnel or something like that. Like we were all getting a little bit frustrated and confused. And it wasn't really until run 10. So at this point we had done 10 runs. It was like two o'clock in the afternoon and we were all just looking at each other like, wow, man, like, is this a waste of time? What are we doing here? Like, you know, uh, are we making all the wrong moves? 
And finally, when we switched over to the new bike, the VPR, we started seeing some, some really positive feedback from this, not only the speed of that bike, but how we were adapting those positional changes to the new bike. So after 11 runs, we took a little bit of a break, got some lunch, got some coffee, got back in the tunnel at 2.30, and then everyone was roaring and ripping, ready to go. And we were super focused, super dialed in, and we were locked and loaded. And so from there, um, I remember Ivan specifically saying something. He said something along the lines of like, this is where the VPR makes its debut. This is where it makes its arrival. And uh, it did. And this was probably run like 12, 13. Um, and then from there, things just got faster and faster and faster. And keep in mind, we spent the first 11 runs trying to optimize the power. So where we kind of netted out around run 10 was, okay, we we're kind of even on the power, or even on the arrow, but we've improved on the power. Okay, cool, that's great, not the perfect world scenario, but we could leave the tunnel like happy, quote unquote. But from there, we were seeing like pretty significant aerodynamic gains with the new kit that I'm gonna be wearing for next year, a different helmet selection, ro uh, road shoe versus tri shoe selection. Like we went through all of these runs, bottle placement, and this and that. And then we ended the day like pretty much about 10 watts quicker than what we started on the original baseline bike, but with a significantly, in theory, more powerful, more comfortable, and like on paper, less aerodynamic position, you know, higher front end, stuff like that. So really, I feel like I'm in a very comfortable, very fast position, which for me, again, I mentioned it before, I'll mention it again, the bike's my relative weakness. Here we are doing everything that we possibly can for 2022 to set the stage for the bike to not be a weakness and not even to be just kind of like, um, you know, a level playing field. Like I'm really trying to excel in this department. Um, and if it's not clear that I'm spending a lot of time, energy, money, and um, just investing in, in things that I think, you know, are gonna help me take that next leap, um, I hope that this shows, you know, kind of where, where my head's at. So yeah, Jeannie and I just want a big shout out to Quintana Roo for um, designing an awesome bike in the VPR. I think if you're looking for a bike, they're one of the few uh, brands in the industry who actually can provide bicycles right now. So if you're looking for a new time trial bike, head over their way and um, yeah, they'll actually be able to deliver a product. And then, um, yeah, as always, big thank you to Waterfall Racing and Waterfall Bank for their continued support. You know, these videos don't happen without them. And uh, if you haven't joined the team, check that out because it's an awesome opportunity. I think as we get into the races, you know, everything that we're doing here has these races in mind. And, um, you know, we're gonna be out there pretty soon. It's kind of just right around the corner. So if you haven't signed up for the team yet, this is your opportunity to jump on board, meet us at the races, be part of all the other awesome stuff, waterfallracing.com to get more information on that. And then, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed some of the, the footage and kind of my story here in the, in the journey of the tunnel. At the end of the day, we did 27 runs. Uh, I had 18, Jeannie had nine. Uh, we tested from eight to 5 p.m. and overall just had a really awesome experience in North Carolina. Um, also big shout out to the team, you know, Kenny, Ivan, Jay, Brad, everyone from behind the scenes, um, Jeannie, and uh, you know, for her support and, and letting me kind of take a little bit of her time, her, her you know, tunnel time there. And uh, yeah, just can't wait to uh, get out there on the roads and test this new bike. So next video will probably come to you guys from our training camp location. Maybe throw a little comment down below. Have a little guess where, uh, where we're headed this year. Uh, we've never been to this training camp location. We're doing two weeks. It's gonna be warm. It's gonna be sunny in theory. And uh, we're gonna go for some, some miles and some good times. So appreciate everyone liking the video and checking it out. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.